I think we're all grappling with should we be more positive about the year ahead? Should we be more negative about the year ahead? How do you think it plays out from here in terms of inflation, interest rates and markets? Yeah, so I'd like to start with where we are today. So if you look at where we, if you begin to compare it where we started, you know, this year, extremely worried about where these markets were going to go, extremely worried what the next steps were going to be. And what we've actually seen is expected inflation rate, highs, uh, rate hikes um, because of the fact that we do have the energy um, uh, conflicts continuing, yet the response has been so united across Europe where we've actually seen a situation now where energy um, supply is coming under control to the extent that Russian gas still is flowing, reserves are still up, production has been, levels have been generally kind of maintained, uh, and at the same time we've seen gas usage drop, so gas demands beginning to drop. It hasn't notably yet impacted production materially across Europe, mm -hmm. which is interesting because once you think about what we were initially anticipating were huge drop-offs. Now, we were helped by the winter, I think we're sitting here being freezing cold, but at the same time, winter has been benign, and let's hope that the next few months will continue to be that case, and therefore demand is allowed to continue to slack off as it is. Now, inflation, the underlying component in inflation right now, um, it used to be gas and gas prices driving inflation rates. The, one, the worry I do have as we look forward into 23 is that the underlying inflation is now also continuing. So inflation has been not just limited to energy price hikes, but literally it has impacted the economies. So, but so we do see the energy component yeah. starting to be less relevant for the inflation and more the underlying components, uh, underlying inflation. Well, I hope you're relevant. right. I mean, I really hope you're right. But I was watching the snow fall in Spain yesterday and thinking, oh, dear, is, is this the winter coming that we thought we'd avoided uh, and we will see what happens to energy prices from here on in yeah. but you can't build a portfolio on the daily movement in the gas price in Europe you need to think a bit harder I think about the second round effects in terms of inflation yeah. and whether it's sticky yeah. and whether the ECB gets back to its 2% target anytime soon and ultimately then what that means for where we top out on European rates. Right so ultimately that means that you're going to take a look at this uh, the, th the third and fourth quarter uh, of 2023. So I think we're all agreed that the economic situations in the first two quarters right now we're, we're into that recession that we've all, all talked about. Now the question is how will inflation continue to behave given the energy component of this, the underlying component of inflation, and then subsequent the ECB uh, response to that. But I, you know the expectation will be that the, if there's any reduction um, in uh, interest rates it'll be toward the end of uh, 23 rather than clearly uh, in the beginning of 23. Robert, I'm always amazed at the naivety. Every single cycle, well, we haven't seen too many rate rising cycles recently, but in my lifetime we've seen one or two. Uh, and the naivety of people say, it's OK, the banks are going to clean up because the NIMs are going to widen. We're going to have net interest income and net interest margin. It's going to be fantastic for them. And like, I always have to point out that actually there's another side to the coin which we're beginning to see in the States, which is delinquencies pick up, the ability of people to service their loans pick up, the economic activity will necessarily decline in that period as well. So actually, a lot of the share prices of European and US banks don't rally because of their NIMS. They, don't, they go down because of a lot of other concerns as well. well but, why but, would we fall into the same trap every time? Well, the question is, why would you fall into the same trap every single time? Because you know, uh, in, in financial institutions, that is the one place to actually watch for. As you get into a situation where NII is doing what it is, interest rates are now doing what they are, you do have that underlying demand and you do have that underlying notion of your cost of risk. What is your cost of risk going to do in the underlying economic situations? That's the modeling that you do. That's the provisioning that you do. And ideally, you've got that consistency in the model of your own bank to ensure that you anticipate the times that are and ahead. And this is my point.